six, fracture of vertebral column with the spinal cord injury. Notice that they've broken it down into your cervical vertebra, closed, 806.1, cervical, open, 806.2, dorsal or thoracic, closed, 806.3, dorsal or thoracic, open, and so on. So there's a lot of detail here, lots of detail. And this is the kind of detail that you're going to have to know from the chart to be able to code it correctly. Are you always going to get the level of detail that you need from the front sheet of the chart? No. So where are you going to get the information from? The whole thing. You're going to read and interpret the whole chart before you can code it accurately because you've got to understand what was wrong with the patient before you can assign it a code. Now, why is that important? Why is it important to assign it the right code? Reimbursement for one, statistics for another. For example, would you expect that the hospital would get paid more for an open fracture of the base of the skull with a cerebral hemorrhage than they would a closed fracture of the base of the skull? You expect that, don't you? Because the other seems to be more difficult. So if we put in the wrong fourth or fifth digit, does that mean that possibly we might get paid wrong? Yeah. And let's say that it's only $500 difference for this one code. That's not too bad in the course of a year. Oh, but wait a minute, you had somebody with that diagnosis a thousand times this year. Now a thousand times times $500 is quite a bit of money. So you will have the power to make or break financially the facility that you work for by how you code things. It's a very important role. And, of course, we haven't had that role, but since DRGs came into being, and that was like 1983, which for you all sounds like a long time ago. For me, I've been around since that long, and I've seen it happen. But it, it's a major, major thing that you have control over. All right. Now, I'm going to take you for a moment, and we're going to see how the alphabetic and the tabular work together. I want you to turn in your alphabetic. Remember, that's in the front of the book. And I'd like for you to look up the code or, or the word gout. Okay, first you've got to know how to spell it, right? So hopefully that medical terminology stuck because we know the spelling is G-O-U-T. Well, when we get to gout, the first thing I want you to notice is that the word gout is followed by the word gouty meaning the adjective form of it, and it's in bold-faced print. And it's in bold-faced print because we call it a main term. There are lots of main terms on that page, aren't there? Mm -hmm. Everywhere you see a bold-faced print, that's a main term. But when you look under gout or gouty, then you see things that, except for the with specified, which is a combining form, you see that they're listed alphabetically. Those things are what we call subterms, or in other words, they take gout and break it down into a finer degree. Knowing that's how that works, tell me what code you would uh, give me for uh, a gouty eczema. 274.89. Tell me what code you'd give me for gout of the kidney. 274.10. Tell me what code you would give me of gouty tophi of the heart. Gouty 274.82. Notice how we went from gout to tophi and tophi to heart. So is tophi of the heart more specific than just tophi? Yeah, look at the code, and you can see that they're both 274, but one has five digits and one has four. All right, all you know is gout. You don't know anything else. What code would you give it? 274.9. Now, that was pretty easy, wasn't it? But you cannot stop here. 
That's pretty easy because that's what we call coding. Now, truthfully, any monkey, any idiot can code if you want to call it coding. You look up the word, and there it was, and you got a code. In a little while, we're going to do some classifying. And classifying is when it's not right there in black and white, and you have to start thinking about it from your body of knowledge to assign a code. That's the hard part. So there's really two distinct parts. We call it all coding, but there's really coding, and that's anybody can do that. And then there's classifying, which takes the broad body of knowledge that you all are bringing to this classroom to be able to do it. Okay, well, that was step one. Let's say that we now want to see what gouty arthritis is, 274.0. Do you agree? All right, let's turn now to the tabular to 274.0. And when we get there, 274 says gout, so far, so far so good. The point zero says gouty arthropathy. Oh, we were looking up gouty arthritis. What is arthritis? Inflammation of the joint. What is arthropathy? No, apathy. Go back to your terms. Apathy means disease. Yes. So that is gouty arthritis, meaning the inflammation of a joint, a type of arthropathy, meaning disease of the joint? Yeah, it is, isn't it? So you've got to know those terms, or otherwise you're going to be stumped. Let me give you a little hint. Put that dictionary right beside you. Yeah. You're going to need your dictionary. You're going to need your medical terminology book. I would suggest that when you get ready to go into a chapter, you pull the medical terminology book out first, and you review everything in it, including any of the anatomy and physiology. Then you go get your A&P book off the shelf, and you do a quick scan of that and review it, because you're going to need it in order to be able to code accurately. Unfortunately, you never get to forget anything you've learned. It One thing builds on another. All right, so does 274.0 then, gouty arthropathy, do you think that would be the classification under which gouty arthritis might fall? Yeah, because arthropathy means disease of a joint. Arthritis means inflammation of a joint. Is an inflammation of a joint a type of disease of a joint? Yeah, but it got a little bit harder, didn't it? Because over here we were looking things up. Oh, that code, that code, that code. But over here.